Holy cow, look at those columns. Hey guys, Wait. look at what we have here. We have columns. Hey, look at that. So we have a few updates on the house. Um, we wanted to show kind of how the house is right now. We're really excited. We leave out of town next week for Together in the Trades. And when we get back, I think there's gonna be quite a few things done. So we wanted to make sure that we captured how the house is now before what it's gonna look like next week because we're not gonna be here to film anything. There so. you go. The columns are in, in certain places. Um, we have the two back here. There's actually four on the outdoor living. Um, those, the first columns, there's actually two that double up. And then on the porch, there's six. So we still have two on the porch to do, the two back, or the four back here, so six more, but they're making progress and it looks so good. There's so many little things, I guess, I don't know, Brian, how are you feeling? Like, right now, I'm anxious about all the little things that like we've done there's still a lot of little stuff to get done no doubt about it but we'll get there you know we got a great team so well, what are we thinking for timeline on the house <sighs> who knows <laughs> hopefully before it snows <laughs> <laughs> um they obviously have to do some more exterior work um some trim pieces we do have our lighting finally done done with the lighting um maybe when it comes in we can go through and show you guys what we picked for each area it's just too hard to do on a video because everything's on a computer screen there's not really f anything fun to look at in person um have they seen the outdoor living area uh not since it's been cleaned up we can okay. take a quick second over there uh i think right now it's a it's a fun time of the build just because we're like 90 percent done probably um but i feel like that last 10 percent is really going to bring it all together right so here's the outdoor living, which I don't think anybody's really seen since last fall, winter. It's So they left all of their equipment here, like midway through the job, because it started to get too cold to work. And we hadn't really seen it uncovered once. Like even, I didn't even see it when they put the concrete on it. So it's really cool to be able to be out here. And I can kind of picture, like we're starting to talk about now, like where do we want furniture? What kind of a layout do we want out here? So yeah, it's exciting, but it's also, the decisions are just never going to end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, here's all the masons and uh, just some of the contractors, all their stuff, you know, that they got to uh, take back with them still. Show sure you guys just a little bit of a loop around. So you guys can see the huge peak, by the way. This is all going to get uh, stained and sealed, right? Yeah. So right now we can show you guys actually in the garage, we have samples of what to do on the exterior roof like this mm -hmm. and then, then on the porch and then also on the exterior like features like the um, arbors over the windows and the flower boxes those all get either some sort of treatment or stained and and sealed so trying to decide on what to do with those i think we're gonna do close as we can to our front door on the flower boxes and the arbors and then underneath here we really like the look of the natural so just to make things a little bit more uniform we're going to do more of like a natural cedar light stain but really keeping with that natural look and then seal so all right, i'm well, excited about how to look out here yeah i'm following you let's, uh, let's go inside we'll go check it out see what's new and exciting but a lot of work still left to do and never dull moment around here like you said all right so a couple things we've been learning along the way too is the just like ourselves in there. oh hey maybe not Seriously, bro? I can't, we constantly lock ourselves in the house. I mean, we're not locked, locked, but. Anywho, uh, <laughs> one thing really quick is hardware. We just picked out hardware. Uh, this door came with uh, a satin nickel, and then same thing with our bifold door, but everything else is satin brass. We picked it out um, like really, really, really early on. So all of our windows, doors, and the bifold, like Brian said, all have like a satin nickel. We thought it was pretty timeless at the time. It is still timeless, but we did end up going with gold on our other doorknob, so a little bit of mismatching, but I don't think it's necessarily bad. Are you breaking the cardinal sin of uh, mixing metals? I mix metals all the time, like wearing it, but usually if it's in a room, like I'd like to have similars, but I don't know. I don't think it really matters, your windows versus like your doorknobs and stuff. Is, is that really a, like a huge I, like, I, make it or break it? I don't think so. I don't think we're big like trends, follow the trend, don't follow the trends kind of people. I think we just are trying to build a home that we like, that we love, mm -hmm. that we enjoy. Like for example, uh, over the kitchen island here, uh, two of the lighting fixtures we picked out are lanterns, go figure. And lanterns uh, are very trendy, but some people are already opting them out for like more of like a lamp shade. Uh, metal lamp lampshade that hangs over and those are absolutely beautiful. We just really like lanterns like yeah. 
So although they might be more trendy. I don't think lanterns are really something that could ever go out, out. No, no, no. And then especially in the main foyer, we have a, a big, do we have a lantern there too? No, it's like a round. It's a round one? Chandelier? I don't know. The lighting, we probably. I, when you say chandelier, it doesn't have beading or crystals on it. I don't know. Yeah. It's like a big round. Well, Ray's lighting, by the way, that was absolutely awesome. Uh, again, it's really hard to uh, bring SKUs and product and quantity to you guys, but had a really great gal there named Cindy, and we're actually only a couple grand over on budget overall with that. Mm -hmm. So when you're 20, 30% over on 50 that grand, that's, that's one thing. When you're 20, 30% over on a 10 grand budget, you're like, dude, who cares, it's two grand. But um, we're really excited. I think it came out really, really well, and lighting is about, what, two to three weeks order for most of the items? A lot. A lot of it, yeah, some of it, I don't know, like we had some that we were looking at that were pushed out until like November, December time frame to get in, which I didn't love the idea of. We actually changed up those lanterns and I don't know if they're in stock. And like, they are. They are? Yep. So they, okay, so yep. these will be installed and it doesn't really matter. It's just, we wanted to make sure, like we had one round going in before we close on the house and the next round going in all at the same time because um, we don't have to have the electrician out multiple times. Tell them that by the way, at least with our electrician, if anybody's building custom, how does it work if you get lighting later? So we have things that come in later, we actually get one visit to install all of them included in what we've already paid. If it's anything more than that, he would have to charge us per visit. But so that was just nice, something nice included with our electrician that he's doing for us. Um, I don't know if he does it for everybody, I'm, I'm assuming maybe, um, but I thought that was nice that, cause he, he knows with lighting that stuff, I didn't realize just like our furniture, it, everything is so pushed out now. And I don't know if it's COVID or if it's always been this way, but it's like, I just don't understand how when you order something, it doesn't come in for, I can understand a few weeks, but we're talking like a few months. Like I don't just understand the way of the world now. Yeah. So yeah. Anyways, you can guys can probably see we have more paint samples up too. Yeah. Well, if we can show them from the paint, we'll take them through. These are the two that I have. I'm trying to decide between in our kitchen. Obviously we have Soji white and white duck. So the main part of the house is just all going to be alabaster. I just love keeping it light and fresh and then I can change up the decor as I want. And these are still really neutral but I wanted some contrast between the cabinets and the wall. I want our cabinets not to stick out, but to have some dimension. And I think I really love this white duck. I don't know how it's showing up on camera, so I'm interested to see that. Because that's one thing interesting about us is like, not only do I want to see all of the colors and different lighting, so I've been seeing it in daylight and then during dusk and then pitch black with just the overhead lights on, um, I also want to see it in the camera. Because mm. we film so much, I want to make sure that things look nice in the house on camera, which you probably don't usually have to worry about unless you're living the lifestyle we're living. Yeah. But just an interesting thing. And then also, our floor medallion. I'm not gonna lift this up. This is actually really, oh, I can, okay. There you go, there you go. So this will match the same color as our floor. Um, we were talking about how we wanted to stain it. I want it all monochromatic. I don't want, sometimes you'll do, where you have different stains for different parts. I want you to see it, but I don't want it to be like, bam, in your face and too many different wood stains just bother me so same color as your floor and i'm really excited about it. i can probably take all this tape off and this wasn't that expensive i think this was i don't even remember it was 500 to a grand i, I forget which it was is expensive but in, is the, it? in the grand scheme of I, I don't think so i mean stuff, i don't think it was that bad yeah i mean it was an investment for sure but we just went with a monochromatic look uh it's all like a white oak live song kind of a look um then you get the west south east north like wood inlay cut and our house runs north to south and it's just slightly off so we're gonna have this exactly we went back and forth so we put it exactly on where north would be or do we like meh, just so it lines up perfectly in the house and i want it exactly on north so it's gonna be ever so slightly skewed i mean just by like maybe an inch yeah and I'm excited. I don't know. It makes me excited. And that goes at the front door. Yeah. Which will be awesome. So hopefully, I could have a better sense of direction than I do growing up with this on the floor because I used to think north was wherever your nose pointed. <laughs> uh, one thing here, really quick, just some uh, lifestyle updates, house updates, whatever you want to call them. Uh, they, here's where the sink goes. Yeah, this was a cool. Um, we were in the car on the way to, I think, raise lighting, maybe? Yeah. And Shelby called and was like, hey, I'm here with the counter guys. They're cutting in the holes for all of your plumbing fixtures. Um, where do you want, like, things? Like, where do you want your button for your disposal? And where do you want, we have a cup washer. I'm, 
I can't wait to just have a disposal, let alone all the other things like dishwasher again. Um, we have a thing that goes up here and it, just like at Starbucks and you push your cup and it like washes it. Cause mm. we're still so very much in like the baby, like little kid phases. We wash cups more than anything else. And so we had to pick where that goes. And what we did, because we actually thought this kind of through, um, we have the washing thing on the right hand because you're using your right hand. And then our left hand is where the disposal goes because we wanted it to be like out of, not out of the way, but like you'd have to actually focus on pressing it. And then we figured if you're washing out the sink, psh, 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 and then you can push the button like with your left hand that's not wet. I don't yeah. know, I just thought that was yeah. such a cool thing to like do. Like I, I guess that's the part of the fun of like building a custom home is you get to pick exactly where you want your thing, so. I love it, I yeah. love it. Uh, do we show them the brick? Oh, it's covered. Well, that's okay, I took some video of it. Uh, but the brick turned out. You can kind of see it in here. Let me see if I can get on. Look at this. Against the blue. Do you see my vision with the gray now against this blue? Looks great. It looks so good. And then the wallpaper came in for the ceiling in here and in the bathroom. I'm pumped about that. We actually decided not to go with uh, wallpaper and cruise room. It is just insanely expensive. I mean, wallpaper. I, whatever it's depending on what you pick i love a certain brand like a certain pattern that i can only get from a certain place and it's really expensive plus the install right now it's it turns out to be like a few thousand dollars and cruise, like four or five thousand dollars yeah, cruise is only a year old like he doesn't know if he has a, his own room yet like he has no idea what's going on so i don't think it's where we needed to put the money right now but it's also something that isn't a big deal to do down the road right. um we can have the contractor back and who knows by the time he's actually in his room <laughs> in a year or two will we even pick the same wallpaper i don't know so really quick uh before we go too far i want to uh, talk about the brick again because uh, i got some great video so how did we uh come up with uh doing the brick and did it turn out how you think so okay the brick was a huge like not point of contention for us because we both love it but kind of a question because finding the brick turned out to be its own thing um and then once we sourced it people kind of warned us not to do, <laughs> to do it because it's hard to clean, it's very rough, um, and it's just, I guess, not the most forgiving floor to have. Like, it can break and chip and I don't know, whatever else. But obviously we went for it. We couldn't picture having anything else in here. Mm -hmm. And after talking to our installer, he was pretty confident after he's gonna um, seal it with a, an epoxy, I think. Sure. That should make it relatively easy to clean um, and yeah, I, I'm. I'm not worried about it. If we, if it turns out down the road we don't like it, then we, we worst case scenario, I can always redo it. Put down on like a rug, an area rug. But really, in Michigan, we we wanted something rougher. We mm -hmm. wanted something with more grip to it because you're coming in with snow on your boots here. Like that was kind of the idea. I don't want anything that's slippery. Right. So I'm not worried about it. it. It's literally five feet into the house and it ends. It's not like it's a whole big room. So I love it. I think it turned out great. Uh, definitely solid investment. I feel. One, th one thing too I gotta say is, um, it goes unnoticed, but like, Mike Miller's team, like look how they take care of everything. Just keeping it clean and putting all this paper down. I know it's, maybe it's a normal practice, I don't know, or this is what everybody else does, but uh, they have a couple guys that came through here and papered the whole basement. Yeah. They papered uh, every they main- They wrap everything so nice, like I want them to go. <laughs> Can I hire you for Christmas? Cause I hate wrapping. Yeah. Um, oh, hey, did we tell them about the brick? Uh, I know that we were questioning it, like going through the process, but I don't know if we ever showed you guys. If you're wondering, this is what we picked for every fireplace inside the house. There you go. We were originally only gonna do this in our master bedroom, and we had a more gray toned brick for out here, or stone, um, and in the basement, but it was just too gray. And mm -hmm. we really, after looking at the social media of this brand, mm -hmm. um, got to see it in other people's homes and not just on a website. So brands, if you're watching, like having like real people like review your stuff and put it online does, does really help. Same We're thing not with lighting. with this brand, but. Same thing with lighting. Yeah, same thing with lighting. Actually being able to go to the brand's page and hitting like tagged photos and seeing, that's a huge tip. If you guys are building a house or doing renovation, if you can go to the brand's page and they have a decent enough following where people are tagging them to see your actual product in a real person's house has been so helpful. Yeah. Interest lately has been, 
because of they changed how they do their algorithm and they've added so much more sponsored and so much more ads in there that it it's just, nothing's it's, authentic. It's, yeah, nothing's authentic. And this so. is this is an El Dorado is the name of that stone. El Dorado is the brand. Okay. Um, we that's Bianco Casa Casablanca. Casablanca. El Dorado cool. rough cut Casablanca. All right, before we show them the bathroom, can we talk about the office? <gasps> so uh, this was actually unfortunately a huge, not a huge snafu. No, a it small, wasn't a huge snafu. Small it was snafu. Frustrating, I think it's. We were frustrated and our painter was frustrated because they actually got the code was off by a couple numbers that the, the person who mixed the paint did. So we didn't realize it though until after we took down the covering for these built-ins that it was purple. Like Barney purple, especially. Like your shorts did. purple. Yeah, like this purple. <laughs> I, was, I might have some photos I can throw in here. It was not good. And then also, the trim work in here is a satin, and we did a flat emerald paint on the wall, so it is washable. Um, no, not emerald. It's emerald's the t the brand. Oh, okay. Yeah. Maybe. And it's washable. It's the only washable flat paint right now that our builder and um, painter would recommend to us because we have little kids like you can see like handprints and stuff that's not doing it on this if you've ever had cheap flat paint in an apartment which i've been scarred for life from i was really against doing flat paint but you guys can see it's not it's not the same yeah so, but that difference with the different color and then the flat we were like holy crap this looks <laughs> yeah it was it was it, two it was visibly two different colors it was purple purple so yeah a little bit of communication they repainted the room thankfully I think that was the first time I actually picked up the phone and called Andy and said, do we got a problem? Yeah, like, hey, something's not right, like... Yeah. The Samir's team fixed it, cleaned it up, looks great. Uh, we're going to show them the uh, bathroom tile. Yes. Oh, boy. So, in here, you guys can see our marble walls are done. This is where we went back and forth, I don't know how many times. I felt so bad because... Um, Everybody's been very flexible with us, and like they say we're not in a pain in the butt, but I feel like a pain in the butt because there's been some things in the house that I've been very indecisive about. And Julian was actually installing our shower tile as we're going back and forth. Like one day it was like, yes, let's do it all the way up. No, like the next day, let's only do it like, you know, three fourths of the way up. Actually, the third day, don't put anything on it at all. And he's like, okay, well, I'm still working on the shower. So he'd come in, I'd come in here and he'd see me have like a little like crisis. <laughs> about it and then leave and then come back to the next day with a different answer again so we obviously went for it and i'm so happy that we did i think it adds some texture and some life into this room mm -hmm. um, i'm going to do a white on the walls in here i've decided still haven't picked the exact white actually all of my samples are now behind tile so i need to get some more samples up in this room your paint samples yeah yeah um but I know I will be doing a white, and I think because I'm doing a white, I'm especially glad that we did this just to add some some character and some, like I said, some life in this room because having an all-white bathroom can feel a little sterile. Right. And I think this, with the window treatment and the fixture we picked in here and the sconces and the mirrors, I think it's all going to work out really well. But yep. I was worried. All good. Looks good. Yeah. And then uh, you picked the grout for the shower, like a gray? We did. We did the same that's on the floor um, just to keep it cohesive and similar. I feel like it sinks into the stone it's not something it draws your eye away from the stone with how much movement there is i didn't want visible like super visible grout lines um obviously you can see them but it, it blends in a lot with the marble so that's kind of what i wanted looks good i think it looks good in here i'm excited paint sconces and uh glass is up next yeah we i don't know how much we have to like pick out necessarily besides like hinges maybe for glass i know in here we have um, a piece of it needs to tilt out because it's a steam shower. But other than that, like, I don't know how customized you can get with, with glass. I'm hoping that's, I don't really think that's a huge like decision process. No. But yeah. Looks good. Looks good. What else is, uh, is an update? Um, they sealed and stained the wood in here, I guess. And, um, anyway, there's wood in the house is now complete. So this is what it'll look like. Uh, once they, they're going to go through and remove the blue tape and then, um, I don't think they'll even cover it again because they're using rollers. So they might cover it when they paint like where it touches the wall. But also I have paint samples in here if you guys want to look. So what I'm doing with paint, because you guys know it's been such a struggle for me, 
is I've picked a palette for the house, like colors that I like, and then I've thrown them in every room. And then I'm letting the lighting in the room specifically tell me what paint color to go with, if that makes sense. So all four of these colors are in almost every single room of the house, and I'm picking what looks best in the room. So it made it really easy for me. Um, I was kind of like a duh moment. I guess this is like what you're, not what you're supposed to do, because you can do anything you want. But what's, I guess, designers recommend or what they do. Um, and yeah, so we have white duck, aesthetic white, egret white, and soji white. So a lot of whites, but I don't know if you can tell on camera, Brian. Nope. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Not really. Just trust that this is like a warm pinky white, this is a gray white, this is a beigey white, and this is like a yellow beigey tan white. You're barely able to see it on camera. Really? It's so funny. Okay, you can really see it in person, so. That's awesome. Yeah. That yeah, looks good. Decision, decisions, right? Yeah. But I think in here, I really just love white duck. It's a very warm, cozy white, but it's not like beige. Like, I, I, I don't know, it's very flexible. So I really like this and then egret white for a couple of different places. But and I honestly like all four of them. Of course. Of course. Well, I think that's a lot of the main updates, right? We um, can show the guest bedroom um, colors. Color. Let's do that really quick. Before we do that, actually, um, in the dining room. So I have all four of the colors that I was talking about in our bedroom. And then we also decided we wanted to try some like actual color because Brian's office is, um, what, what is the name of it? Uh, blue. Charcoal blue. Not it, sure. But it's like a suit blue. Like it's like if you were going to a business meeting and needed to wear a blue suit, that's like the blue suit color in his room. So I wanted to do something a little bit more transitional in here, so not as impactful, but still to play off of that color. And this is Silver Strand. This is one that was recommended to me by um, Kylie M Interiors, who we worked with for paint. It's really pretty. It's a gray green color. And then this is Krypton. This is what we have in the laundry room. And I love this color. It's a really beautiful I, color. It's a gray blue, so it would play well against the blue in his office. Um, so I think this kind of competes, whereas this like melts nicely together. And, it, and it's not one that's typically recommended to go with alabaster, but this is alabaster and looking at it against it, it doesn't clash in my eyes. Um, I've tried it in here in all different lights now and I think it reads nicely still. We do have Let It Rain, Never Got Put Up, and one other color we want to look at before we make a decision in here. But so far, out of all of these, this is what I'm leaning towards. Yep. Love it. And I'll show you guys one thing Liz was talking about. So you got to try it in different colors or in different uh, corners with different lighting, right? So here's the same thing, but backlit, if you will. Yeah. Not being in direct light, it, it gives you different vibes. Paint so. is tough, man. It is really tough. That is really tough. Oh, and by the way, here is where the uh, floor medallion goes. So this is a huge, like three quarter inch recess portion that uh, they left cut out. So that's why I put this piece of plywood here. Somebody falls. <laughs> so. All right, now uh, let's go downstairs. Okay, our handrails are um, done for the most part. Yep. Which is nice to actually be able to feel them. Like, they're nice and smooth and like, it's just cool to me. Love it. What do we got? So, interesting, maybe they painted the baseboards in here and then we're like, hey, let's get some samples on the wall. And I'm like, well, <laughs> yeah. Backers. But okay. Um, we have iron ore and urbane bronze. The doors are currently the same as the baseboards, which is fine because we're gonna go with urbane bronze. It was just kind of a funny little like. Yeah, let's get some samples, but yeah. obviously the sample is. Like this is, is currently urbane bronze. Yeah. So this is Brian's studio, and he's gonna have um, podcast recording one way, and then filming studio setup the other way. The lights in here have like, I don't know, you guys probably can't see the ceiling super well, but there's outlets everywhere. So you can actually rig up his lighting, rig up his sound, like, and not have to move it. For the last eight years of being on social media, he's currently having to set up and take down every single time he films, every single time he podcasts. So he should be able to just walk in here, flip a switch, and like be ready to go, which will be life changing for him. But because of the film, um, we wanted to keep it kind of moody so that when you control the lighting, it just looks the same every time. Not that you couldn't do that with like a lighter color, but we wanted it to be- A little bit more moody. A little bit more moody. And I think the urban brown will look good. Yeah, here's some other uh, samples of it, different light, right? So you get that dark blue and then more of that, or what is it called, urban browns? Yeah, it's actually extremely dark brown. 
There you go. It's a really pretty color. Love it. You probably just have to trust us until you see it. There you go. In his videos. Okay, back to paint. Go have the same four swatches that is in every room, and then this one down here is called Sea Salt. Is that one showing up in here? Yeah, these actually show a little bit better. Okay, I think the direction of the lighting and stuff. So white duck, aesthetic white, um, egret white, soji white, and then Sea Salt. And I love this color. This is the color that our guest room is going to be, and I'm so excited because we already have our first guests lined up to stay in our guest room down here. We don't have any furniture in here for it yet. They're gonna be sleeping in uh, <laughs> sleeping bags. But it's gonna look, I can like envision it and I'm so excited to host here and like, I'm just pumped. So envisioning this room with guests in mind is really fun to me. So yeah, there you go. There I you think go. that's pretty much all we have for today though, right Ryan? Yeah. Gonna show, I guess, the porch maybe but oh let's go wrap up outside okay. all right well we're gonna wrap this bad boy up but here's the tour of the front holy cow look at those columns those look huge bro yeah so <laughs> the guys are doing such a great job on these the, the guys who are doing um the exterior carpentry stuff weren't our finished carpenter in the interior and they i have to say are like our cleanest like they they pile everything up in such nice like little like at the end of the day the way they wrap up the job site is really nice and I'm obsessed with these. I cannot wait. I've been saying this forever, but for fall with corn stalks, there was something like growing up, I was always envious of the homes that had like, you know, like the classic, super classic fall decor with like, you know, um, garland, like the, the corn stalks and the scarecrows and pumpkins. And then you'd go into their house and it smelled like cinnamon and it was just such a cozy like atmosphere. And I think that's what I've been like holding in my heart. This whole process is just like waiting for our first fall here. And it's a little bittersweet, obviously not being in the house for the summer because we thought we would be, but honestly, I'm just, I'm holding out for fall and like having the columns up has just made it so real. Like I can actually, envision our house decorated for the holidays now especially christmas like i can't we're gonna need a lot of christmas lights but i can't wait to wrap them in christmas lights like it's gonna be so fun and they're so much bigger than they look on paper they're huge they're huge like they're huge it's like so, a foot and a half by foot and a half bro. yeah but i'm i'm excited brian what do you think i love it i mean holy cow it makes the whole house i mean this is giant porch but just uh, excited to wrap up and we'll be in the house hopefully uh, next six, eight weeks tops. So love it. It's, it's, we've, we said this and this is the last thing I'll say. I know this video is going long, but you said it so well the other day where you're like, I know that this is like a project we're doing and like this is our project, but it doesn't feel like we get to live in it after. It just feels like something we're doing together. And I couldn't agree more. Like it's really hard to actually think like, I get to live in this like i'm gonna wake up in a house like just we've never had a house before not like this every vendor we've met with like we met with the concrete guy and i'm like we've never had our own driveway before i'm so excited to have concrete again it really is the little things like that we aren't taking for granted throughout this process that i have i think have surprised some of the people that we've worked with obviously building this as our first home um i wouldn't assume that this is anybody's first home you yeah know? not to like very very grateful but, yeah very very so. thankful Love it. All right, well, over and out. Uh, we'll catch up with you guys here and in a week or two, uh, appliances. Yeah, so I actually, I think they're scheduled to come in while we're away. Yeah. So that's what I was saying. I wanted to make sure we did a walkthrough with how the house is in this phase because when we come back, there's going to be a f quite a few new things, I'm hoping. Cool. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm so excited about appliances. But, oh, yeah. All right. I guess we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.